What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to go through three envelopes and profile the players that signed for me. So let's just jump right into this. And as you know, this is a themed video. So we're going to jump into this. And this first one is postmarked from Louisville, Kentucky. And it is indeed a success from, from former Los Angeles Dodger, Franklin Stubbs on one. Two on an 86 Tops Traded Rookie Card. Three on a 90 Donneris. And a fourth on a 1990 Tops Traded. So let me tell you a little bit about Franklin Stubbs. Franklin Stubbs played his high school ball in North Carolina and later played his college baseball at Virginia Tech University in Virginia. He was an All-American at Virginia Tech, hitting 29 home runs throughout his career. And later, this would get him elected to the Virginia Tech Hall of Fame after his playing career. Stubbs was drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers in the first round of the 82 draft. For a few seasons, he, he played in the minor leagues, but made his major league debut playing first base for the Los Angeles Dodgers on April 28, 1984, against the Padres. He would appear in 87 games for the Dodgers in 1984, but would also be sent to AAA, where he appeared in 29 games that season as well. His rookie season with the Dodgers, he only batted 194, but he did hit eight home runs. So the following year, in 1985, he was pretty much sent to AAA to prove himself. Well, in 132 games in AAA, he, he smoked 32 home runs and batted 280 while playing the outfield and first base for the AAA affiliate of the Dodgers. This would merit a 10-game call-up in 1985 for Stubbs, and in 1986 going into the season, he made the ball club and appeared in 132 games for the big league club and hit 23 home runs. His batting average was only 226, but he did hit 23 home runs that year. And going into 1987, he appeared in 129 games and hit 16 home runs and improved his batting average to 233. Well, in 1988, he would appear in 115 games for the Dodgers. And of course, being an integral part of the Dodgers run for the World Series title. And he would hit eight home runs while playing first base in the outfield that year. And in 1989, he was basically delegated to a part-time role, only appearing in 69 games. He was planning on returning to the Dodgers in 1990. However, on April 1st of 1990, almost right before the season started, he was dealt to the Houston Astros for pitcher Terry Wells. He spent the entire year with the Astros and was granted free agency after that season. From there, he would sign with the Milwaukee Brewers, and he would spend some time with the Brewers, appearing in 103 games in 1991 for them, and then appeared in another 92 games in 1992 for them. After the 92 season, he was let go by the Brewers, and he signed with the Boston Red Sox, however, spent the entire season in AAA for the Red Sox. Instead of signing with a major league club in 1994, he actually spent the season playing in the Mexican League. He was successful enough in the Mexican League that in 1995, after the strike had ended, he came back and played for the Detroit Tigers for one season, appearing in 62 games and hitting a respectable 250 off the bench as a backup player for the Tigers. After the 1995 season, Stubbs hung it up from his playing career and almost immediately, after about a year off in 1997, became a hitting coach with the Braves organization. Stubbs would stay in the Braves organization all the way through 2009. And then in 2009, he would go back to the Dodgers in a coaching capacity and would coach for them for many seasons. Finally, in 2015, Stubbs decided to leave the Dodgers organization. I don't know if that was against his will or his choice. And he went to coach for the Arizona Diamondbacks organization in 2016. He spent a couple seasons coaching in the Diamondbacks organization. And as far as I know, I'm not sure if he still works for the Diamondbacks or not, but that brings us up to almost current times. 
So, very happy to add Franklin Stubbs to my collection. I'd never gotten him before. This is obviously one of those guys that was an integral part of the Dodgers' success in the 80s. But anyways, happy to add those to the collection. And my next success is from former Seattle Mariner, Boston Red Sox, slash Los Angeles Dodger, Matt Young on 404, and this is the 88 Fleer team set I was mentioning. I went through it and the Stubbs card was gone, so I'm not sure if it got misplaced or it just simply wasn't in the set. Not a big deal, but let me tell you a little bit about Matt Young. So Matt Young, a California native, played high school baseball in California, but also pitched in college at Pasadena City College, as well as UCLA. He was drafted in the second round of the 78 draft by the Boston Red Sox, however did not sign and stayed in college, but a few years later in 1980, he would be selected again in the second round by the Seattle Mariners. After signing with the Mariners, he spent 19, part of 1980, along with 81 and 82 in the minor leagues, and in 1983, he made the Seattle Mariners pitching staff as a 24-year-old rookie. He would appear in 33 games, starting 32 of them for a pretty bad Seattle franchise. And as a matter of fact, in his rookie season, became an all-star selection for the first time and only time in his career with the Mariners that year. In 1984, he struggled a little bit to start the season and was actually demoted down to AAA, where he was very successful with a 6-0 record in AAA, and in 1985, he was back at full force with the Seattle Mariners as in their starting rotation. However, the season was not very good to him, and he actually led the league in losses that year with 19 for the Seattle Mariners. Well, in 1986, we saw a little bit of change, and instead of being a starter, they made Young a lefty specialist out of the bullpen. While Young would find some success as a reliever for the Mariners in 1986, however, after the 86 season, he would be dealt away to the Los Angeles Dodgers for Dennis Powell. He would spend 1987 with the Dodgers in their relief corps, appearing in 47 games as a lefty out of the bullpen. After the 87 season, however, he was traded in a three-team trade by the Dodgers, along with Bob Welsh, longtime Dodger pitcher, to the Oakland A's. So this is how Bob Welsh became a Oakland A, and this is how Matt Young became a member of the Oakland A's, and I apologize, I'm going to have a card of him as an A. Well, after this trade, he actually injured his arm, in the 1988 season and did not appear in a game at all for the Oakland A's in 1988. Well, in 1989, coming off of injury, he did make a comeback with the Oakland A's. However, he only appeared in 26 games for the A's at the majors, but did spend some time in the minors as well that year rehabbing his arm. He won a World Series with the A's that year in 1989. But after the season ended, he was let go by the A's in 1989, granting him free agent. After his time in Oakland, he would sign again with the Seattle Mariners, and the Mariners gave him a second chance at being a starter. However, in 33 of 34 games that he started, his record was only 8 wins and 18 losses. Well, after his return to Seattle, that one season, he was let go again, by the Seattle Mariners, becoming a free agent, and that is when he signed with the Boston Red Sox. Right here. So he spent a couple seasons with the Red Sox. His first season, he was kind of more of a starter, but by his second season in 1992, he was kind of a spot starter, long reliever type out of the bullpen. His time with Boston did not fare very well. Going into the 93 season, he was still under contract with the Red Sox, however they decided to release him on March 30th, right before the 1993 season. About a week later, he would sign with the Cleveland Indians, and would split time between the Indians AAA affiliate and their Major League club. He was released by the Indians 
in August of that year, however, did not stay unemployed long as the Toronto Blue Jays picked him up and signed him as a free agent. He, however, did not get a chance to pitch in the major leagues with the Blue Jays that final year in 1993, which was a shame because that was the team that went, went on to win the World Series for the Blue Jays. And after the season ended, the Blue Jays unconditionally released him from his contract. So he, he finished his career in 1993 in the major leagues with the Indians. However, he finished the year in the AAA affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays. After his playing career, I don't see a lot of uh, reference to what he did after he was let go by the Blue Jays. However, uh, he was considered a top pitching prospect until, you know, he basically hurt his arm and had to have Tommy John surgery, and he never was able to come back to the true form that he had when when he was earlier in his career as an all-star. So I want to thank Mr. Young for signing these. I really appreciate that, and we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this final one is postmarked from Georgia, and it is former Los Angeles Dodger outfielder Ralph Bryant on one, two, 87 tops traded, three, there's another one of those 88 Fleer cards, and a fourth 1987 Fleer dual rookie card with Jose Gonzalez. So Ralph Bryant grew up in Georgia playing his high school ball. And also played his college baseball at Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College in Tifton, Georgia. He was actually selected originally by the Dodgers in the sixth round of the 1980 draft, but chose not to sign. But the following year, the Dodgers made him their first round pick, 22nd overall in the 81 draft. As a first round pick, Bryant signed with the Dodgers as a left-handed power hitter playing the outfield. He spent 81, 82, 83, and 84 all in the minor leagues, and at that point hit 31 home runs in 1984 for the Dodgers AA affiliate. Well, 1985, he started the year in AAA, and he hit 15 home runs while batting in a respectable 268 for the Dodgers AAA affiliate. This garnered a major league call up in 1985 that year. And he made his debut in 85, appearing in six games to finish out the year. Well, in 1986, it was back to AAA, and he could not be ignored as he hit 19 home runs, which the Dodgers recalled him in 1986 as well to the major leagues, where he appeared in 27 games that year. Well, going into 1987, it was back to the minors. So back to AAA for a third year where he hit 16 home runs. However, in 87, this would mark another call up for him. And he would appear in 46 games in the outfield for the Dodgers. Unfortunately, going into the 1988 season, the Dodgers did not really show much interest in Bryant being part of their future plans. And in May of 1988, Bryant made the jump to the Japanese Professional Baseball League. There he played for the Chunichi Dragons. And after about a month with the Dragons, he was then sent to the Kitetsu Buffaloes and played the season with them. Bryant quickly established his presence with the Buffaloes, cracking 34 home runs in only 74 games to contribute to their huge comeback, which put the team in close second place behind the Cebu Lions in 1988. Bryant would return to the Japanese League in 1989, where he would crush 49 home runs to lead the Buffaloes to their third Pacific League championship. He would win the season MVP award and also tied Sadarara O's career record for hitting three home runs in a game five times during that season. He continued his success for the next few years and retired in 1995 ever after missing most of that year with injuries from the Japanese League. He did, however, make a brief comeback attempt in the United States in 95 as well. However, that really didn't pan out. After his playing career, Bryant then returned to Japan in 2005 to be a hitting coach for the Onyx Buffaloes. 
After one season as a hitting coach, he, he returned to the United States. Uh, it also mentions that despite his success as a prolific home run hitter in Japanese baseball, he also holds the top four spots on the single season strikeout record for uh, Nippon professional baseball. It also mentions that Bryant was also the first player with MLB experience to strike out more than 200 times per season in both of the Japanese professional leagues. So that's kind of a dubious honor, I guess you would say. So I guess you would say that Bryant had a successful professional career. It wasn't per se as successful as you would think for a first round pick in the major leagues. However, he got his opportunity to go play in Japan and became a league MVP in 1989, crushing 49 home runs. So I'm very happy to get Mr. Bryant back. If you are a Japanese baseball fan, and I've posted a couple videos on my channel about Japanese baseball, Ralph Bryant is definitely somebody you want to consider writing because he's a Japanese league MVP, actually. So thank you very much, Mr. Bryant, for signing for me. I also want to thank Mr. Young, for signing my cards as well. With these 87 Fleers look really nice. I've always enjoyed that white bordered set for some reason. Maybe it's just the nostalgia. And I also want to thank Dodgers great Franklin Stubbs for also signing my cards. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to your comments below and as always, happy collecting. <laughs>